Actually, you don't dissuade people from techniques. You referred to them the other day as being similar to push-ups. And certainly you've taught many techniques, and you have a wonderful book on the 12 different gateways and lots of different techniques. But the irony here is, once again, is the techniques sort of reinforce the notion that you have to learn to do something other than really just being present. Well, yeah, actually, what I, what I offer, uh, in summary, are perspectives, principles, and practices. Now, d doing push-ups is a practice. It's not a spiritual technique, but it is a discipline, an exercise. And you get certain results over time if you do push-ups. And if you meditate over time, that's another exercise. And you can expect certain kinds of results. You might develop a little better concentration, a little stronger ability to uh, w observe what happens and let it go and not get attached to it. Um, so certain benefits come from meditation or push-ups or any other spiritual exercises, whether it's breathing, concentration, imaginative exercises, visualization. All those things, with practice, get better over time. But they're simply practices. And here, here's something that many people forget about. In terms of physical exercise, it, in six weeks it's possible to get an 80% of one's lifetime best shape. If someone is out of shape physically, but they begin a progressive routine of training for six weeks, they will be in significantly better shape after six weeks. But if they are in good shape and they do nothing for six weeks, they'll also get 80% out of their best shape in six weeks' time. So the implication there is we benefit only by what we do regularly as part of our everyday life. Going to a meditation retreat and meditating for 20 hours a day or a physical training retreat where you get in incredible shape and more flexible and more stronger, that's, you're only going to stay at that level if you do that every day. So it's what we integrate into our everyday life, not fitful, heroic efforts now and then. What we can integrate simply and practically into our everyday life. So it's not so much techniques. I, I don't really like the word technique, except it's part of life. There's a technique of eating. There's a technique of lovemaking. There's techniques in doing everything in life. So it's like a craft, the idea of craft, making cabinets or doing anything else. But techniques don't get us to anywhere. They just are methods, skillful means to do whatever it is we'd like to do. In fact, I'd like to tell a story. Um, Socrates and I, the old man I called Socrates from my book Way of the Peaceful Warrior for people unfamiliar with my work, he was a gas station attendant, an all-night mechanic. And he taught me a lot about life. Anyone who's read Way of the Peaceful Warrior knows this. Uh, or Sacred, Jour uh, Sacred Journey, or actually my new book, The Journeys of Socrates, uh, is his life story. And it tells how he became the man he became, how a man became a warrior, and how a warrior found peace. Well, in any case, Socrates and I are in the gymnasium. I did a, a full-twisting double somersault off the horizontal bar, my dismount, and I stuck my landing. Most people know it's good to stick your landing without moving. And I went, yes, you know, and then I ripped off my sweatshirt, threw it in my workout bag, and we were walking down the hallway after workout. And he said to me, you know that last movie you did? He said, really sloppy. And I went, what are you talking about, Sock? It was the best dismount I'd done in weeks. And he said, I'm not talking about the dismount. I'm talking about the way you tore off your sweatshirt, threw it into your bag. And the, his point was I was treating one moment as special, flying off the horizontal bar, special. And the ordinary moment was just ripping my shirt off and tucking it into my bag. I did that casually without real attention. I wasn't practicing that. So he said, athletes practice athletics. Musicians practice music. Poets practice poetry. Peaceful warriors, and he's referring to all of us, really. Peaceful warriors can learn to practice everything. Practicing writing one's name. How many of us still practice our signature or just do it to get it done? Practicing walking, breathing, sitting, speaking, making love, doing the dishes. Everything we do, we can practice. Standing in line at the post office, you can practice that by paying attention to what's going on around you, to making good use of that time, maybe walking very slowly, checking your balance like a moving meditation when you're in line. We can practice everything. That's not some never-ending self-improvement program. It's rather it's a way to make life more interesting, to practice life itself. And we can always ask ourselves three questions. Am I breathing? Am I relaxed? 
and am I moving with elegance or refinement or quality? That's what practice means. So this is a very simple practice that transcends all others. We can even practice enlightenment, but that's a whole other topic. <laughs>